It's him and I, Aquemini. What's going on, YouTube? This is Marcos from Aquemini Pressure Wash, and I'm back again with another video. In this video, yes, it is. It's going to be a pressure washing hack that a lot of us can use who doesn't have a pressure washer trailer or they have a pressure washer rig with a hose reel. As you know, I don't have a trailer or truck or anything that I can put uh, hose reels onto. And I really don't have a place to mount it uh, on my truck because I don't want it on my truck. Um, I still use my truck for my family outings and everything like that. So I have to find a different way so I can pack up the hoses uh, besides folding them up and using bungee cords and Thank you to the viewer who gave me that suggestion. If I, I can't remember your name, but if I go back and look at your comment, I'll leave your name and a shout out to you for giving that suggestion for the bungee cords. But this hack right here should solve my problems. And the way I'm gonna do it is by using this. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Suncast Sidewinder. This right here is a hose reel that you mount onto the side of the house. Now, I don't have a place to mount this on a truck, so you can't mount it to the truck. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna build something where we can put two of these on one little stand that we can use to roll out our hoses and roll them back up in a timely manner. So if this works, you can, I'll leave everything in the description below so you can see what I use to do this, but I will walk you through step-by-step step on what I'm doing. All right, let's get into the video. All right, guys, like I said, this is a Suncast Sidewinder. You can get these off of Amazon. They're about 30 something bucks a piece. So I think in this total bill, I think I would be out $80, $90 for the entire uh, bill and stuff. Now, keep in mind, you can get you a decent hose reel for like maybe 110 bucks or something like that. Start around there, probably that hold a hundred foot core. So if you have a pressure washer trailer or a rig or a skid or something, I probably would not go this route. I would go ahead and invest in the hose reel and then just get your second one as the time comes or try to get two at one time. This right here makes more sense for me to use because I don't have a place to mount a hose reel. I can do the same thing. I can make some kind of mount or something to, to mount the hose reel, a regular hose reel onto but I think it's gonna to be too heavy and it's, well, it might not be too heavy, but it's gonna to be too cumbersome and too big. I think this is not gonna take up no more space than this being side to side. And what I'm gonna do is just build a piece of wood right between it with a handle where I can just lift it up. That's the plan. So let's see what happens when I put this together. First thing first, like I said, I got my two side winders right here by Suncast. The next thing I need to do, I need to get some wood. What I have is an eight foot long, two by 12 piece of wood. And basically I'm gonna use this to make my mount. The mount is gonna be real simple. I'm just gonna have one piece of wood running underneath the pressure washer, underneath the tire. And then I'm gonna have one vertical piece to hold the hose reels. So we're gonna go ahead and put that together by just go ahead and find a good length for each one of those. And then we're just gonna cut it, those on the two pieces. The key part of this is me connecting the two pieces of wood together. And the reason being is I got to make sure that it's strong enough to stay together. And also we don't want it. We, we definitely don't want it to come apart when we're trying to unroll it or even rolling the hose reels back up. Have the hose reel itself. I uh, have a little short hose. Have the mounting bracket and the screws and instructions. No, we don't need those. The first piece I think I'm gonna cut is a vertical piece. So I need to make sure that this piece right here is gonna clear. This is gonna be my bottom part and this is the top. Five inches at the bottom, five inches at the top. Let's say 510, so the 26 inches is what we need to cut this piece of wood. I got square, we're gonna mark this off. I got it marked off. I mean, I don't wanna zoom in too tight and slide that on y'all, but I'm trying to get you to understand what I'm doing. 
So this is 26 inches, so this is gonna be my vertical piece. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece off, and then the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut my piece that I'm gonna have on the ground. That way we can mount it underneath the tire, and I'm gonna show you how that part is gonna work too. And then we're gonna put two pieces together, and after we put the two pieces together, then we're gonna mount the rest of this stuff together. Now, I'm not too sure if you're like me, but I have tools and stuff that I use to build stuff all the time, so this is nothing to me. Got a fresh battery right here. So I'm gonna cut this on the table, um, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put something underneath it to lift it off the table and stuff so that way you can see what I'm doing. Now I got plenty of clearance underneath my saw, so I ain't gotta worry about hitting this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this. So this is our vertical piece. We need to cut one more piece. Let's just cut it at 36 inches and be through with it. If it's too long, then we just cut it down. But right now, I'd rather for it to be longer than shorter. I'm gonna mark this off. That's my base. And like I said, we're gonna pretty much get this halfway. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring this back five inches. That way it has nothing that it can hit against anything. So this is the piece that's going to hold the hose rail. This piece right here is going to be on the ground, which I'm going to rest the pressure washing tire on. So then when I pull it, it will pull through. And like I said, this is jacked up right here. So we are going to cut this off. It's just too jagged. This is our base. We're going to come back five inches, which is right here. And then, like I said, this is 11 and a half inches. Well, it should be 11 and a half. It's not quite. So right here is halfway. So that's our halfway mark. All right. So I have tools that you probably won't have. What you can do, you can pretty much take this piece of wood, get it lined up to where you want it right here. So that'll be about five inches from the edge. So that way my little roller won't stick out that far and stuff like that. And hopefully it won't get damaged um, by me uh, putting it on the on and off the truck and stuff like that. What you can do is like I said, get it to this position right here and then you can just drill your holes from the bottom. So you can do the same mark on the bottom, drill you some screws at the bottom and that's basically will drill into this when you get it centered. That'll make, and that'll be pretty much it all you can do. I have this though. I have a credit jig. <laughs> I haven't used this in a while. So I'm gonna use this to make my pocket holes and then this is gonna give me a stronger base. The way this works is basically you have your jig, you put your wood in here and you're gonna take your, the drill bit that comes with this, which is right here. And what you do, you drill down into the pocket, to the hole, and what it's gonna do is gonna pocket hole into this, and it's gonna give you a strong hole onto the wood. So right here, that's the depth of my uh, wood and stuff like that, so that would line up with this right here. So as you can see, this little tip is going down to the wood, and what you do, you go by the marks of how deep, what size wood you have. So this is a one and a half, so one and a quarter, so that's right there. The bottom piece of this drill bit should be hidden right there, which it is. So now this is line, This is set for this particular piece of wood, so that makes it easy. If the wood was thicker, so say for instance the wood was uh, three quarters of an inch thick, the bottom of this drill bit should sit right there. That way when you start your pocket hole, it's going to be perfect and stuff like that. And then you just have to have the right screws. So right now I am set for one and a quarter, which this is what this piece of wood is. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this piece into here. This piece right here is supposed to lock when you pull it like that. It's not locking, so that's mean that this screws need to be adjusted. So I just back that right there. And then I back this little plunger piece back into this little arm. So now let's try it again. There we go, man, it's locked into place. 
So now what I need to do is take my drill, get my drill bit. Now, take my pocket drill bit and I'm gonna drill into this wood. I can put two holes in here at once or I can put three. Uh, so let's do, let's just do two. We'll do one right here and one right here. So we'll just take the pocket bit and make sure it's on four. <laughs> and make sure it's on drill. Let's try this again. So that's one pocket, and then we do it again. That's two. Now, take it out. So I got my pocket holes drilled and stuff like that. Now, one thing I didn't show you, I need to show you. Right here is also the thickness of the wood. One and a half inches or one and a quarter. Um, so I got one and a half inch, so that should be good enough right there for me. What I'm gonna do, I got those two right there. I'll probably put two more on this side, uh, maybe two on this side. So we're gonna put two on this side. Let's see how we're gonna do this. So we put two and two, and then we'll put one on that side, one right here, and then one on the other side. So we're gonna put another one right here. So that way we can kind of stagger. That's locked. Take our drill bit. So I got four on this side. So we're gonna flip this around and get four more. And remember I got holes right here and I got holes right here. So these these two, uh, two holes that I'm about to hit should miss the other two and that's gonna give me some good pocket holes. Okay, so now we're through with this drill bit. Keep up with this stuff. So I always keep it in my box. Put it back in the little package. Now I have the <clears throat> now I have this little bit right here that comes with the pocket screws. So I got one and a half inch pocket screws to go with this. So this should work just fine. So we'll take this loose. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm putting this piece of wood on this line right here, and then this little mark, the center mark, I'm gonna mark it up right there. So that is gonna be where I want my piece of wood to rest. And we're gonna take our pocket screws along with our drill. Make sure it's tight. All right, so now we take a screw. I'm gonna just do the first one first. And then I'm gonna take a measurement, make sure that it's centered. Right there. So let me slide that over some. There we go. So now that's your center. Take our pocket screw. That seems like it's a little bit too loose. Let's go with some longer screws. These are two inch screws. I think these will work a little bit better. Let's see. Oh, that two inch screw, that would did it. Let's back these out. Put these back. I think I just have enough two uh, screws to get this done. So we'll take another two inch screw.
And if you haven't used um, a credit jack with pocket screws before, this thing is stiff. Let's see if it didn't, let's hope it didn't go through, which I think it probably did. And it did. I probably pushed this one too far. It doesn't need to go that far in, it just need to go far enough to hold it. So I'll probably bat that one out. So I gotta be careful on the next ones that I put in. Let's back this one out a little bit. So then back it out. These pocket holes are gonna be a lot stronger than just drilling through the bottom. Um, but I probably still drill a couple of holes um, through the bottom with some longer screws. I got some uh, carriage bolts that I. Uh, was working on the deck with and I'll probably use those but this right here is going to make it real strong now one thing about these screws you don't want to strip them out uh, if you do you're going to be in trouble once on one I need to go get some more two and a half inch Screws. These screws are a little bit more expensive than regular screws, so just keep that in mind if you go buy some. But this is the piece. This is pretty much strong. It's not going anywhere. So the next thing I'm gonna do, like I said, I do have some more bolts. Put that on the side. So I'm gonna mark five and a half inches. That's pretty much where my bolts are at. I think I'm just gonna um, run one carriage bolt. So I have these. These are uh, headlocks. Uh, they are four inch bolts. Do I need some that long? Yeah. I'm gonna use these. Uh, I'm not just gonna take this and just drill a hole. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a pre-drill hole with my drill. So I'm gonna get a drill bit, drill a hole, and then that way these are uh, going in a little bit smoother and won't split the wood. I got this together. It's already strong enough, but I just want to get this little bit extra boost to it. Got a few drill bits right here. I don't have anything super long, so we're just gonna, all right, we're gonna just drill into this wood right here. I'm gonna put it. Kind of right here. Let's make sure that's dead center. So that's the spot I want to drill. And then right here, want it right here. And that's the spot. Right here, right here, we're going to just drill a hole in here. So we got it drilled. So here we go. Now, let's do better than that. Take our impact drill and we're gonna drill it in that way. There we go, wood and split. It's kind of rocky, but it's going on concrete and um, grass areas and stuff like that so i don't have to worry about it rocking so we need to mark off where we're going to do this so here's the um so here's the hose reel so the way i figured that this will work is with the regular hose i should be able to screw it onto this and then after i get it on i just spin it and that's basically it with the pressure washer hole, I had to get some adapters, so we'll get to that next. But first, let's go ahead and get this mounted. So I did, I did at first, I did have five inches up at the top and bottom, which I cut some off to make this a little bit smoother because that edge was jagged. So 
we just want to mark off five inches from the bottom. So five inches from the bottom of the wheel is right there. So that's how it's going to look, guys. I think I can go up a little higher, so. Won't hurt. But what we're going to do, we're going to take this and we're going to mount this just like that. So we're going to get the height by getting it. I'm just going to eyeball where I want to start. I think that's a good enough space right there. So we're going to mark that off right there. So that's going to be the top of the little mount bracket. So now what I want to do, I want to get this centered. But that's pretty much centered. It's about eight inches, so four right here. And I'm pretty sure I'm correct because that little piece right there is centered. So is there a difference between the top and bottom? Because I see this little slit right here. I guess that's where the holes the holes go. If you want to um to run it, let's see. I did toss the instructions away, but I guess I'm gonna have to bring them back to see what that piece is for. I'm just gonna glance at it real quick. So behind it, it has a little feed. We're not using that. Um, that feed will supply the water to the hose reel piece right here. So you got that piece right there on the inside. Like I said, we're not using that. And then we have a piece right here. We're not using that. So that's irrelevant. So what it is, it's just a little piece that the holes right here feeds into, and then that way you have uh, your supply line hooked up. But we're not using that, so the only thing we basically want is this. We want to get it centered, like so, and that's the top. And we want to put a couple screws in. Put the screws in that came with it, which is four. Gotta be careful this is plastic and we don't want to go all the way through the other side and stuff like that so we just want to basically get this fill and now so i think i have a quarter of an inch i think that's a quarter inch socket bit let's see i'm gonna take our drill bit and our drill so this is eight millimeter or one fourth one quarter of an inch socket if you were using that. All right, so basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna line this up dead center. So center right there. So that's our mark right here. one this doesn't have to be fancy guys but if you want to get fancy with it you can take a level and make sure it's level i don't think it's that serious so once again we're just gonna go in. let's get snuck We don't want it to penetrate through the other side and also we don't want to crack this piece. We want to make sure it's strong, but like I said, we don't want to damage anything by over tightening it. It comes with a little silicone too, for some reason. I don't know what that's for. I guess to get this little piece right here, the groove. Matter of fact, I may end up taking that out. I don't think I need it. Can I take it out? No, I think I'm gonna need it because it's got a lock in the place. So, whoops, I'm glad I didn't take it out. All right, so let's get these two. That's one. Two. If I lubricate this, it may, it should slide into this little 
pocket a little bit easier and stuff like that. So let's at least do that. Like I said, this is just a little grease, like this petroleum jelly or something. I'm just gonna squeeze that on here. And we're just gonna lap that up pretty good. Yeah, they ain't give you that much for it because they know that you're not gonna really need that much. So just spread it out. So now, take this piece and pop it on. I still don't understand what that piece is, but I believe it locks it in place. Yep, so this locks it in place after you slide it on. So we need to get this pushed in all the way. And then this little tab right here locks it in place. That's pulled out and then slide it in place. Oh, there we go. It's locked. There we go. So, this is my reel. Now, like I said, I take my holes, don't have to tighten it up too tight, just want to slide it onto here and then basically. That should be my theory. So let's try that. Okay, guys, got it set up the way I want to use it. As I was saying, I got the pressure washer sitting on that piece of wood that I got on the ground. And then I have the hose reel right here. So in theory, what I should be able to do is just connect the hose up to here and basically pull wind it up and that puts it out and then when i'm ready to unravel it only thing i gotta do is just grab it and pull it that way back that way and the holes will be unraveled so right now we need to go ahead and see if we can get the holes on this side we're going to try the garden holes first and then we're going to jump into the pressure washer holes and i'm going to show you how we're going to connect that as you can see the little water spigot piece is tied in there it doesn't have to be tight. I'm not running water through this or anything like that. Like I said, I'm just gonna spin this. All right, guys, to start off, this is your standard 3 8 connect that you use for your pressure washer holes. So this will connect to my pressure washer holes, but they will not hook onto that hose reel that I just purchased. So what we got to do, we got to find a way to connect that piece. Well, we have to find a way to connect this piece to the hose reel. And the way to do that, we have this flange. And basically this flange right here screws into the water spigot uh, inlet that's on the hose reel. And right here, this piece right here, as you can see, has threads, but it doesn't fit. So since it doesn't fit, we got to do a reducer to make that fit. So we got a reducer right here. Okay, guys, so how this is going to work is we're going to take our little flange and we're going to put it into our reducer right here. We don't need no nylon tape or anything. Like I said, we're not using this for pressure or anything like that. We just use this to use this as a quick connect, and this is the way to do it. So what I probably would do different, I probably would change this out to a male piece. That way I can have the male piece closer to the pressure washer instead of me putting the female piece here. And I'm not going to be able to uh, get it on there because of the... Uh... No, that should be correct. Yeah, we golden, guys. If you look at this, my downstream ejector has a female piece. This is a female piece. So this should go on with no problem. Only thing that I have to do is just make sure that when I put the hose on, I connect it here and pull it off and then we are good to go. Now, I have to have this piece on the pressure washer in order for it to work. No, we're not golden. 
And when I'm thinking about it, this is the piece that goes to the pressure washer. This is the piece to come out. So really, I need to change this from a female to a male piece. And I should have some. So this should fit. Bam. All right, we golden. So that's how I need to hook this up to the water spigot. So instead of using that female piece, I'm using a male piece. And that way, when I run my holes, I don't have an issue connecting it to the pressure washer. I don't have to walk one end down to um, the end of the driveway and then walk it back up to connect it. That way, when I pull the holes out, this piece will be connected to the piece that I need to connect to the pressure washer. So instead of using a female, we want to use a male 3 8 um, so we want to use a male 3 8 uh, quick connect on the end. So you have the reducer, we have the flange to the reducer to the male 3 8 adapter. So that's how we want to do it. Let me put this back up. Take my flange, reducer, and my 3 8 quick connect. We're going to just spin it on here. So... Now, if this works, we're just gonna mount the other one to the other side and then we're ready to go. So now let's get this in. Quick connect is connected. Let's see what we get. This hose even fit even better on here. So uh, the little trick that I did is gonna work. So now I can go ahead and take out the other hose reel, hook it up, and basically we're gonna find a way to get it mounted. And that way it won't move and stuff. But let me check one thing out. Take this off. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm going to put a couple of handles on here. That way we can um, just lift it up and put it in the back of the truck. Maybe some wheels. Uh, who knows? I have some casters in the drawer over here. But we're going to go ahead and mount the other bracket to the other side. And then that way we can go ahead and get this a test in the morning. All right. Okay guys, I went to the Home Depot. I grabbed a couple of items. Um, I went and bought two handles. They was about $8 a piece. Uh, I'm gonna mount one at the top and one in the front. So that's the second handle. The next thing that I got were the little hooks. So that way I can screw these on the back over here. That way I can hook my hoses through the hooks and they won't be in the way. So I got two of those. Um, next things I got, I got these little casters. So I think I'm gonna mount these on the back side right here. So if I had to carry this a long distance, I at least have wheels on the bottom side of it that I can roll it. So that probably will help some. So we're gonna take a few screws and we're gonna um, screw these in. And the next thing I got was this little adapter right here, which is a metal double female adapter. Uh, so what this is gonna do, is gonna allow me to screw this onto here and then screw the other end of my holes to the opposite side. So when I pull the holes out, I have the side closer to the, the side that's closer to the pressure washer would be the one that I plug in instead of me having to walk the holes out and then walk it back because it's the wrong end. So that would eliminate that uh, extra walk and stuff. Okay guys, so what I have here is just pretty much a handle that you use on a gate. 
or a door of um, a shed or something like that. So I got this at Home Depot. Let me open this up. So it's a door pull. And basically, like I said, I'm gonna mount this. Comes with the screws. So I'm gonna mount this right here. So that way I have a place to help me pick this up from the front. And also if I need to roll this, when I put the casters on the back, I have a handle just to pick it up and, and I'll roll. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get these screws in and we're gonna mount this. So we're just gonna uh, pre-drill a small hole. So that way we won't split the wood. Make sure we got it deep enough. Now, I'm going to do is take our little handle, put it right here. way get that one started and get this one started and then tighten this one up that's pretty sturdy so we got that one on um, before I put the one at the top, I'm going to go ahead and do the casters on the back. Uh, now, let's go ahead and do the one at the top. Now, let's go ahead and put, mark it off. Pre-drill the holes. Like I said, guys, pre-drilling the hole that way your wood will not split. And get this other hole lined up. Stack of the screws and stuff. So that's where I want it. Let's mark this off again. And we're gonna try to do some pre-drilling on this. Probably be better if I take the stick off and I can draw onto the wood. Yeah, right there. 
to go. Again, I'm taking my drill bit. drilling the hole so I won't get any splits. pretty much done okay guys the audio wasn't that good so I'm gonna go ahead and do this voice over so you can understand what's going on right here I'm just rolling the hose reel out that I made outside and here I'm taking off the water pressure washer hose so I can get everything set up and stuff so the night before this you know went pretty well and stuff like that I just didn't have enough space in the garage but today was pretty nice outside so now I'm coming out for the first time and I'm trying to get everything hooked up and try to see if it's gonna work correctly here I am putting the um, water hose on and the only thing I did was just like I said use the quick connect and I'm just rolling it up to it gets completely in now that we got that one set up, we're going to go ahead and hook up the pressure washer hose. And this time I'm going to roll it um, from the bottom side because this is the best way to do it so it won't get damaged. And as I'm doing it, I'm just guiding it. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm just guiding the hose where it won't get tangled up and just be bunched up in one spot. So I'm kind of moving it side to side with my hand. There we are. Got it. Straight now, I'm testing to see if I pull it out, if I had it at a job, what would happen. So as you can see, pulling it out is no issue. Um, it's 100 feet, so both hoses are 100 feet. So when I pull both of them out completely, you see I went all the way to my neighbor's yard. Um, but to get it out the street, I just walked them back. That way we won't have anything um, getting ran over by cars and stuff like that. So here I am again. I'm rolling the hoses back up again. And as you see, this is real quick and stuff like that. Uh, even though the video is sped up a little bit so we can uh, save time and stuff like that. Um, I say it still didn't take me no more than about maybe um, two minutes to wrap both hoses up completely. They're not tangled. And as you've seen earlier, when I was pulling them out, they were um, getting tangled when I pulled them out. Here I am just testing the wheels and stuff. Now, it does have a little weight to it, but it's not that much where it's going to hinder you from putting it on your vehicle. So, the way I think I'm going to do this, I'm going to put it on truck. This is higher than the truck, so it shouldn't be, if I can get this up there with no issue, it's not going to be an issue getting it on the truck. I'm just going to rest the wood on my leg, pretty much grab its handle, and I'm just going to lean back with it and put it on the on my uh, workbench and that'll be represented as a truck. Put it on the truck, slide it in. So that's the way I got the plan to work. Okay, so we got that done. Everything, the little test was a success. So now we're gonna take the little hooks and we're gonna put these in different areas, probably one here and one here. And then what I'm gonna do is loop this through there and loop this one from the bottom. That way I won't have to worry about this getting in my way, tripping up or coming to loose. Okay, as you see, only thing I did was I got one hook facing, the opening facing on this side, this one on the opposite side and just cross the two hoses and that should hold it in place. Now have the caster right here, just basically roll on the ground. Cause this is kind of heavy, but not as heavy as the pressure washer picking it up and trying to put it on a truck. But it's still good to have wheels on it, so that helps out a little. Right here is the sun cast hose reel. 
basically this is a uh, three quarters of an inch hose it's not a flat zeller hose so this is a stiff water hose and stuff like that so right here i have a double metal female adapter that i'm using to connect the hose so that way i can have the right end of my hose closer to the pressure washer and i pull the other end out which is going to go to the water spigot on the opposite side i have my 3 8 pressure washer hose and basically what i did i have um, an adapter where I can hook it up to a water hose spigot, down to a reducer, down to a male end 3 8 uh, quick connect. So I made sure that the female end of the pressure washer hole is closer to the pressure washer because this is what's going to be sitting next to the pressure washer. Now keep in mind, um, when you load this back up, what you want to do, you want to make sure that you do. I, I mean, I am at least, I'm going to make sure that the water is out of the hoses because having water and hoses is going to make a mess when you uh, try to load up. You're going to get wet. And also, it's going to make this a little bit heavier than what it is. Right now, I'm thinking it's about 50 pounds, maybe uh, 60 um, at the most. But I'm thinking it's around 50 pounds. Could be a lot lighter. I, I need to get the scale to uh, see how much it weighs. So this size could vary depending on what you decide to do with your pieces of wood right here and the height of where you want this. I think this is the perfect height for me, but I think this is going to be a good solution for me to help load up a lot quicker. But my suggestion, if you have a space for a hose reel and you don't have to carry it and you have a place you can leave it mounted and stuff like that, invest in a regular hose reel. Get you one first and then maybe come back and get the second one later. Because eventually it, when I get something like another trailer or something else, these is probably going to go away and this is going to end up on the side of the house. You know, that way I can have a hose reel for my garden hose here at the house. But yeah, I think this is a good solution. I think this is a game changer. I haven't seen anybody else did this, so maybe this is the first, but I just came up with this out of the side of my head after just looking at other people doing it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I really feel like what I did right here is going to be a game changer for me. Maybe it may help some other people out there who have the same problem as far as not having a hose reel and also they don't have a space to load up a hose reel on their truck or rig or something like that. To me, this is the next best solution. Outside of this, I think what I would probably do is, like I said, I would invest in a regular hose reel to mount it somewhere on the truck if this is your if that's your main vehicle that you're going to uh, do. But me, myself, personally, I use my truck for other things, so I cannot mount this on the truck. I don't have a trailer, but I also don't have the space to use regular hose reels. So I think going this route will make a big difference. And as you see, when I was rolling this up, it didn't take hardly no time. It probably took me about a minute, two minutes to roll both hose reels up pick them up, get them loaded in the truck. This solution right here is gonna save me anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. The time that it takes me to get the hoses unraveled when I'm unloaded. And then also the time that it takes me to put the hoses away and get them back onto the truck. Those That right there takes a lot of time. And this right here is a solution that I feel that is gonna do it. Now, the good thing about this, if I'm at a job and it's a small job and I can get my hoses and stuff out around to the job without taking it off the truck, I can leave this on the truck and then also leave the pressure washer on the truck, unravel all the hoses, go ahead and do the job, and then just get back on the truck, roll everything back up, and I'm out of there. So that's going to make it quicker for jobs like maybe uh, surface cleaning or front driveway or something that's real small and maybe a sidewalk and I can leave everything on the truck. But if I had to bring it off the truck, I do have a way to move the stuff around. This makes it easier. The wheels, I think that was a last minute decision to put the wheels on it. And I think that's a game changer right there because the wheels right there will allow me to roll this up and down hills and stuff like that if I cannot get my pressure washer to the area. Well, if I can't get the truck and the pressure washer to an area that's close by the truck. Like I said, if you looked at the video and stuff like that, you can pretty much follow the, the steps that I did. You don't have to do them exactly the way I did it. Just basically, I'm just giving you an idea in the head what you can do and stuff like that. But the way I did it, it seemed like it's gonna work perfect. As long as this piece of wood that you have going up and down is uh, mounted to the base plate, uh, I would call this the base plate or the base piece of wood that's on the ground. As long as that is attached to the, um, to the wood sturdy, 
you shouldn't have that uh, any problem. If you need to, maybe put some two by fours or something on the side to help brace it or something, but try your best to brace this piece of wood right here that's going vertically and holding the hose reels up. Make sure that it's very sturdy. All right, Equimonites, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you find it entertaining. If not, at least I hope you learned something from it. If you didn't, go back and look at the video because you skipped over the good parts. If you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you for being a subscriber and supporting the channel. If not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you know when my next video comes out. Hey, do me a favor, hit that like button for this video and also leave a comment below if you have any questions. Hey, this is Marcos from Corner Pressure Washing and I will see you in the next video. Peace. It's him and I, Aquemini.